Hello, Goals fans. We continue on with our player interviews. It's good to talk with Chris Weidman and uh, a big fan favorite that you came about this year here in San Diego, your first year uh, with the Gulls and the Ducks organization. So thanks for taking your time to join us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. So first thing to catch up with you is where are you spending your time right now and uh, how have you been holding up? Yeah, I'm back home in, uh, in St. Louis. Um, holding up all right. Everybody's healthy here. Um, you know, it's it's obviously a little bit of unprecedented times. So, you know, everybody's kind of, uh, you know, doing their best to get through things. But it's uh, definitely nice to be home with family and, and get to spend time with them. So we just learned earlier this week that you were announced as the San Diego Gulls Man of the Year Award, which is given yearly to the player who contributes the most in the community and who is very active and obviously all due to the Whiteman's Warriors program. And I know we talked about this way in the beginning of the year, but uh, just kind of refresh our memory on why this was so important for you to get out in front. Yeah, I mean, you know, San Diego is a huge uh, military community. Um, and it's something that, uh, you know, I was really excited to get involved with, um, get a chance to meet the servicemen and women that uh, came to the game and uh, were just kind of out and about in the community. So um, something really cool. Uh, that we started and uh, you know we were able to meet some really cool people. How unique was that to, to bring them down to the locker room after the game get to know them and, and actually start to understand what they go through on a, on a daily weekly monthly basis? Well the the first couple games were were tough because we <laughs> lost go and and uh, you know wasn't in the greatest mood after the games but it, um, it puts things into perspective you know when you get to meet some people and they're very thankful about being at the game and having the chance to to meet uh, me and some of the other guys after the game. Um, you know, it was a it was a great experience, and I think uh, just reward just as rewarding for me as it was for them. Do you see yourself getting involved like this, whether it be publicly or just you know, on your own in the future, whether it be in San Diego or or wherever you may find yourself in years to come? Yeah, for sure. I think uh, anytime you have an opportunity to give back um, is is important. And, um, you know, I was given the platform in San Diego to to uh, to do that. And, and we took advantage of it. And I'm you know thankful that the organization supported me and and uh, made it all possible. So um, it, it was great. So you're back in St. Louis now and I'm a St. Louis native. So I, I got to ask you this question. Not a lot of people know this about the, the area, but there's a lot of unique food in St. Louis. So with that being said, was there something that you grabbed on a takeout or to go order as soon as you got back home? Yeah, no, uh, we're we're big Emos fans at our house, pizza. So we've had uh, we've had the delivery guy over a few times and um, trying to stay uh, stay healthy and in shape. But uh, that's that's my guilty pleasure for sure. Have you had any T Ravs? And then you can explain what those are to fans because I don't think like, San Diego knows what those are. Yeah, we had, uh, along with your pizza, you got to get the toasted ravioli, which is, uh, for anybody that's had uh, ravioli, it's deep fried. And uh, instead of having uh, cheese in the middle, it's uh, typically ground beef. Um, I know that people are kind of messing around with some different things, but uh, ground beef and, and dipped in uh, marinara sauce is, can't beat it. It's a, it's a must try. So I know that you sent a, a video uh, like right when this started to unfold to wish our fans uh, all the best, but you had a little fluffy dog with you there. So uh, <laughs> who's your dog? Uh, is it a boy or a girl? And how long have you had your dog? Uh, our dog is a year and a half old. Uh, his name is Shooter. Playing there and he is back around the house quite a bit. Um, even in the summers, typically, uh, you know, training in the morning and, and helping Caroline at her store in the afternoon. So we're not a lot, we're not home a lot. And uh, he's probably been on more walks in the last two weeks than he has in his entire life. So he's, uh, he's been getting a lot of love and, and I think he's enjoyed it. Is that kind of a spinoff from the name from uh, Happy Gilmore, Shooter? Yeah, there's a little bit of that. And uh, I've had some buddies in, in Ottawa that uh, messed around with the name a little bit. Um, because I wasn't passing the puck as much as I should, so um, it's a little <laughs> bit of a little bit of both. And uh, you know, he, he's a he's been a lot of fun, and and uh, you know, he's definitely uh, keeping uh, keeping us sane. 
You said you went on a lot, a lot of walks with them. Uh, I'm sure that's a little bit of a program. How is a pro athlete like you staying in shape and trying to maintain a, a pro body because you don't know when the season can come back around again? Yeah, I mean, I mean, we basically uh, typically when the season ends, uh, you know, if you're in the playoffs, your your body's super beat up, and if if you're not in the playoffs, then um, you know, you kind of leave with a sour taste in your mouth and you're, and you're excited to get back training for the next season. But um, this season ended so abruptly that, you know, you're, you're almost, uh, almost dumbfounded, right? Like we're, we're used to burning so many calories. You can basically eat whatever you want and then um, it comes to a halt. So for me, it's more about eating, right? Like just making sure that I'm watching what I eat and, and doing it that way. Cause there's only so much you can do, uh, physically right now we got some weights at the house and a stationary bike so we've been doing a little uh, circuit training in the driveway but other than that there's uh, not much going on so outside of working out uh, what are some things that you've been doing in your free time have you found a new hobby or have you been uh, snuggled up next to the tv uh i've been watching a lot of tv we'll watch actually at, at night we're watching uh uh we got a list of like top 30 movies that we're getting through. So we've watched some classics. Um, other than that, uh, played, a, played quite a bit of golf. Um, our course is still open. We got to walk and got to keep your distance from other people. But um, we've been fortunate enough to get out there uh, a little bit. And, you know, other than that, a little bit of reading, um, just trying to stay busy, some napping. What's one movie that you've seen that you would strongly suggest to fans watching in right now that maybe you haven't seen or you never thought was going to be that good? Uh, last night we watched Casino, which I had seen before, but that's, uh, I think that's a top tenor. Um, Scarface was the night before. Um, I think we have Godfather lined up tonight. So we have, we have a good little list going and it's, uh, um, some that I've seen before a lot. My fiance is watching for the first time. So she usually gets past like the opening credits and first couple scenes and then she's snoozing and I'm watching solo with shooter. So it's, uh, it's not all bad. Has there been anybody that you've played golf with that uh, is an NHL or anybody that we would know it as hockey fans? Obviously you said you're keeping your distance, but I'm sure that you're getting maybe a group or two or three guys together. Is that right? Yeah, uh, I took some money from Brady and Matthew Kachuk this morning, so uh, <laughs> we've, we've already we've already got that out of the way, and then we have a little rematch tomorrow morning. So um, it's it's uh, honestly I, it's been a long time since I've carried my own bag and, and walked eighteen holes, and been doing that uh, the last couple of weeks. So it's that's kind of helped in the uh, activity level. Oh, but uh, I got some fun questions for you right now. Uh, what golf player would you want to be quarantined with? If you could just pick one and you two were in a room for two weeks or in a house, who would it be? Uh, oof, I'd probably say Stolarz because we have roomed together on the road all season. And he is like the most laid back dude ever. Um, but if you want to have some fun, I'll have some fun. And he always has snacks. So he's a, uh, He'd be a good guy to, to kick it with for two weeks. Who would be the worst golf player to be quarantined with? Maybe somebody oh, that's man. maybe a gamer and you don't game. Who would it be? Uh, I mean, I, I think I, I'd be able to get along with just about everybody, but I'll just say Justin Clues because it's, you know, I like giving him a hard time. Do, is it, what's the easiest way to get in his head? And I think I might know the answer to this. Uh, we, we played quite a bit of golf together towards <laughs> towards the end of the year. And he's just, I mean, it's nonstop. He likes to give it back to me, which I, you know, I really encourage and, and enjoy. So we, we had a lot of fun together and, um, you know, just thinking about it makes me miss the group. And, you know, that was, uh, I think, part of our success towards the latter half of the year was just how much fun we had together and how close of a group that we were. You know, that's something that you and I talked about at the very year, how last year when you were moving around from team to team, you never really had that camaraderie. And now that you had it this year and you guys had a really strong bond and I was watching it firsthand. How does it feel? I, I know it's disappointing and we still have the unknown ahead, but it's got to be tough to get ripped from that group and be secluded right now. Yeah, no, I think that a lot of, a lot of the, um, 
I guess uh, it's just the uncertainty that, that makes it the hardest, right? You know, when we were traveling back from uh, Tucson, our last games, uh, we were kind of in the airport just talking as a group and uh, we had won a, a, a big game the night before and, and against a really good team. And, you know, we felt really good about our game, probably the last like 25, 30 games and really moving in the right direction. And uh, you're getting to that fun part of the year where uh, every play and every time the puck's on your stick, it, it really matters. So um, that was, you know, probably that, that's probably what makes it hardest because we were just kind of getting to that point where we're starting to win games. We're starting to beat really good teams and we're doing it consistently and finding that consistency for us at the beginning of the year was almost impossible and we worked really hard to get it. And, and, you know, unfortunately uh, we don't know if we're going to be rewarded. Yeah. I, I talked to Sam Carrick about this and originally I didn't plan to talk to you about this since he already touched on it, but I, I might as well. What, what was your feelings after the game? Because you guys put your phones away and that's when the NBA news came out. And then after that big win, like you said, you, you open up your phone and all of a sudden the NBA has already, already postponed their season. So what was your, your mood after that? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was interesting because, you know, when we, when we heard, you know, obviously guys are all over the map, you know, you're calling your family, you know, Hey, this is what we're hearing. Um, you know, not sure what's going to lie ahead in the next day or, you know, weeks and, and, uh, you know, you start thinking about, you know, safety and, you know, what, what's going to be the overall outcome of, of what's going on. And, and hockey becomes a very small part of that. So um, usually after a game like that, we'll get back to the hotel and when we travel early the next day, guys will get to bed. But there was a big group of us that stayed up and played cards and, and kind of just sat around and spent time with each other. And you could almost feel like, hey, this, this might be the last time we get together like this for a long time. And and that turned out to be the case. So um, I'm glad that we definitely have those memories. But yeah, it's just, it's one of those things that, um, you know, you, you really just can't put it into words because there's just so much unknown. So since you've been in quarantine, has there been any moment that you've looked back or, or any, and we can't even go outside of your own career, but any hockey game that you've been watching on replay or any type of pro game for that matter at all that you look back and you think, man, that was, that was a good moment in sports. Yeah, no, I, I, I've really enjoyed um, the end, what NBC's done. They had the, I think one of the first days I was back, I watched like a game from like 2011. I think it was Flyers Penguins and it was like line brawl, line brawl. I think it was the first round playoff series. And, and I remember watching that game in college and being like, this is, this is crazy. So I, I caught that one. Um, I'm going to catch this coming Saturday. They're going to replay um, the 20, I think it was, yeah, no, 2008, 2009, sorry, Frozen Four, where we lost to Boston University when I was at Miami. Uh, I still haven't seen that game where we blew a two-goal lead with uh, about 58 seconds left. So I'm going to catch that one and, and uh, you know, finally figure out whose fault that was. <laughs> so I got some good questions here that we can wrap this up with and it's it's going to be almost rapid fire here uh okay. so give me, give me the answer as quick as you can cookies or cake cookies cat or dog dog pop or rock rock pancakes or waffles Ooh, uh pancakes hot chocolate or coffee coffee Morning or evening person? Morning. Text or call? FaceTime. <laughs> French or Spanish? Jeez. Uh, I love Mexican food, so I'll say it's Spanish. Got a few more for you. Summer or winter? Summer. Tea or coffee? Coffee. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Coke or Pepsi? Neither. I don't drink soda. Okay. And then last one, rain or snow? Rain. Snow. Snow's ruined forever. Just being up in Ottawa, it, it ruined your taste for it? Oh, man. I, it was fun for like the first like snowfall of the year. And then it's like a, you're living a snow globe until Easter. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I know that you sent a message off to the fans uh, right when the quarantine unfolded, but uh, now that we're here in the thick of things, is there anything else that you have to say to the Gulls fans right now? Yeah, uh, I think just, you know, there, there's a lot of people out there that are going to be going through hard times, um, you know, whether it's financially, emotionally, or uh, anything in between. And, and just, you know, you're not alone. Everybody's going through it. And, you know, if you can find some sort of support system, whether it's family or friends, uh, make sure you reach out. And, and on the other side of that, um, you know, make sure you're looking after your family and friends. Call people. FaceTime people and make sure that you're connecting and, and uh, letting the people know that, uh, you know, you care about them and, and you're thinking of them. All right, Chris Weidman, thanks so much for your time and stay safe out there. Thanks, Andy. Talk soon.